What is going on my mates? Nate here, Mates Club's busiest music mate. Okay, so today we're gonna be talking about Parker Clapton of the story so far. No, but before we do that, I just gotta finish up this coffee really quick. And then one more thing, gotta go buy two Rockstar energy drinks and then we can freaking do this video. Oh, I just realized something. I think tomorrow's Thanksgiving, so I, I, I may just have to hear some white moms yelling at their kids that aren't really even doing anything while I go in the store, but but it's worth it. It's worth it for the Rockstar. To my surprise, just a second here. To my surprise, it's actually pretty dang tame in there compared to what I thought it was gonna be, but it's only like nine or 10 in the morning, so that might be why. So, you know, I'm saying don't go to the store later. I don't even want money from Rockstar. I just want a big enough supply of free Rockstar so I can have a heart attack by the time I'm 27. What does every successful band have? Now, you may be thinking they might have great merchandise, they might have great music, their live performance, their live performance might be amazing. <laughs> and all of those things can help a band be a successful band but there's one element that every band must have in order to be successful or at least on the level that certain bands get to and every band must have a parker cannon and what does the story so far have they have themselves a parker cannon <laughs> so if you go online you'll see lots of pictures as well as videos of parker cannon interacting hanging out and just chilling with his fans and having a really 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 good time at almost every show he's been doing this for years and years and years but there's a twist and i'm joking like you, you, he doesn't do that now after doing a lot of digging a lot of research a lot of very 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 deep thinking on this topic or subject Subject, I came to the realization that it's it's literally it, it's literally just my my fault. I'm the last person I would have suspected, but I was looking for me all the time. It's the perfect crime. I'm I am the entire reason why he does not like his fans, why he doesn't hang out with his fans. It is my fault. Today we're gonna be answering two questions. Why does Parker Cannon hate his fans? And number two, how did he go from this? to this to this now in order to really really understand this topic and digest everything that surrounds it we must take a trip back in time to warped tour 2013 where i absolutely ruined parker cannon forever warped tour 2013 i woke up at like 6 a.m because it was a two-hour drive i forced my mom and sister to wake up and drive me could i drive of course i could but did i want to no so my friend lane and i along with my mom and sister they drove us to ventura california which is actually kind of a cool trade-off because they got to go to the beach while we did our thing is that is actually kind of it worked out but I remember being so excited. I had one goal. I had one goal only that day. My one goal that day was to meet Parker Cannon, Pecan the man. Say what's up. Say suppy to the freaking mate. Say, hey dude, your music freaking rocks my world. Clairvoyant saved my life. That thing with the lyrics, that's what that is all I wanted. I remember this like it was yesterday. I remember everything. I knew that Parker Cannon was at their merch table at the time. I knew it. I was for sure. How did I know how? Because because there was a line of 87 12 year old fangirls and then me right in the middle ready to meet Parker Cannon the man the under soil and dirt master the guy who swings his arms when it, when the drum hits so at times and it's super sick I was so ready to meet him and say hi and it was gonna be great and don't even worry i was wearing an og wonder years shirt i came prepared because i wanted parker cannon to know that i was into pop punk not that i was just into pop punk that i'd been into pop punk for a while so i was like super duper worthy of being in his presence and meeting him and i just i just knew he was gonna be super impressed and be like wow that's kind of an old wonder Years shirt you must have you must have been doing this for a while and i was like yeah. I remember going up there. He was actually running the merch. He was actually getting people's merch. And I said, hey, Parker, I want that shirt over there. And he said, which shirt? And I said, that one. And he was like, which one? And I was like, the short sleeved one. He's like, we have multiple short sleeved ones. And I was like, the one with the American traditional tattoo art on it. And he was like, but that's every single shirt that we've ever sold. You need to be more specific. And I was like, okay. And I and I ended up getting the shirt that I wanted. And then after that, it all goes downhill because I asked him a question. I said, I said, <laughs> I said, hey Parker, 
can we hard style and my friend can get a picture of us? And he was like, yeah, dude, I, yes, let's do it. And like, I, I pulled my phone out of my pocket, made sure it took the maximum amount of time for me to get my camera out of my phone. You know, open my phone, get to the camera, hand it to my friend Lane to take a picture. He takes a picture, you know, we're good, you know, like I'll, he took the picture. I looked at the picture and I was like, yeah, this is good, but it could be better. I was like, dude, do you mind doing this one more time? And he's like, dude, it would be a privilege for me to do this again with you. I want to do this again so bad that I'm actually going to mess this up a second time on purpose so we can just keep doing this. Like you can see the visible excitement on his face. Just look at this man's face. Now I know that he's wearing sunglasses, but it's just one of those photos where you can tell that even his eyes are smiling without even being able to see his eyes. Now before we move on, can we just talk about how freaking tough I look in this photo? Like look at my face. My face like this stone cold freaking tough as a hardcore guy that's been going to hardcore New York shows since the 90s. Our fists are freaking together. Parker's clutching like 500 bucks worth of lean and weed money. Like this photo, this is this is a good photo. Right there, summer 2013 Warp Tour. My part, 99% of the reason why Parker Cannon hates his effing fans. 99% my fault. Now you may be thinking, Nate, what about that 1%? Well, we're going to talk talk about that. These two boys right here, these two stunning individuals have been doing the Lord's work. We're gonna have to go further back in time to spring of 2012. These boys, they just know how to interview bands, okay? That's all I'm gonna say before we get into this. Now, hold on just a second. Before we get right into the next part of this video, I do just want to say something. Even though I will be goofing on these boys hella, I want to point out two things. One, I am at least a 100,000 times goofier than both of these boys combined. Two, they're both really, really cool people. And I guess, okay, three, they've both acknowledged that this interview was like ridiculous and funny. So it's some lighthearted fun. Okay, my mates. So with that little PSA out of the way, we are on our way. Just one more quick note. <laughs> Filming this in a grocery store parking lot. One more quick note. This is the very, very last video interview that Parker Cannon has ever done to the best of my knowledge. And this was six years ago. <clears throat> he did a small talk with Run For Cover Records, but that was filmed by Alex Henry. So it's more just like Parker was kind of chatting with someone that he was friends with so that doesn't really even count as an interview it's just like oh yeah we're, we're band friends talking so so whatever one thing that makes this interview so spectacular and stand out that the overall tone of the interview is pretty much established less than 10 seconds in let's just take a peek all right what's up guys we're here with the story so far uh this is actually dom you guys will should go check out his youtube channel too i'll put it in the description i set uh, stuff up <laughs> yeah and uh so guys this is moment for you too Watching music every single week. Oh my gosh, there's already so much to unpack right here. Like seven seconds in, the kid on the left says, Oh yeah, by the way, I set this up. I set uh, this stuff up, so I'm just saying. Yeah. And you can you can see Parker shaking his head, and then the kid on the right named Pierce is just like, yeah. yeah. And then goes into like a little intro. Yeah, you're watching Musically Music Dogs, and you're watching this, and every week we're gonna be doing this intro, so what's up, guys? By the way, I, I just love interviews or YouTube videos with other people where people have to do their intros. Hey, yeah. what up, YouTube, YouTube? And it's just really, really awkward for other people that are involved. They're just like, my name is Parker. I am Darth Vader. No, I'm Will. All right, guys. So we have some questions. Uh, Wait, where am I? Where are my questions? Oh, you got them. All right. I mean, hold on to them until it actually starts. Until it actually okay. starts. Like, the worst thing? It is literally so hot in here that I'm either gonna have to get naked or just take off the sweatshirt. So if you've ever listened to the story so far, like ever, you know that a lot of their songs say the F word and a lot of other really, really horribly bad curse words. So in this interview, I'm very, very thankful that they did censor out Parker saying the S-H-I-T word. <laughs> And it's also pretty amazing that, that kid's like, where are my questions that I gave to Will? All right, where are my questions? Oh, you got them. All right. I mean, it's a long time until actually- and Will's like, but you gave them to me. And he's like, well, I mean, yeah, like just, just for a second, like- Let me have them back. So how did, how did everything start? How did this band begin? Who started it and what, it, what happened? Uh, brief history. Uh, started in, started in the winter of 07. And, uh, started out as us jamming. 
wanted to play local shows and it's more about going to shows than it was playing them. We just loved it, you know. And then one thing led to another. Started to take it a little bit more seriously. And word. Is. That's honestly one of the best interview questions ever because it's like, how did you guys become a band? I think what's so great about it is there's only ever one possible answer. It started out as us jamming. And that is, well, we're friends and we got together and we started playing music and we're still playing music and now it's to bigger people. And yeah, we're, and that, that's, that's how we became a band. What's your biggest influences? Uh, my dad, Mac Dre. Why do you say your dad? He taught me how to play guitar. And he toured the country, so yeah. I don't know. You've been in a band before this too. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're in like a you know a band family, then it's probably easier to get into the music and stuff. Your parents are more accepting. Yeah. My dad was sure. in a, yeah. My dad was in a. My dad is in a in a band um, with a bunch of other dads. <laughs> I love how his question just basically boiled down to, why do you love your dad so much? And he's like, well, cause he's my dad. He taught me how to play guitar. <laughs> Tour the country. Oh, what is your dream show? Where, what would happen? Where would it happen with the lineup and all that? Uh, it'd be us and only us. And, uh, and Earth and her 10,000 Flowers and Gutter Children would play. And there'd be pyro of tactics everywhere, just fire. Fire everywhere. It'd be. It looked like hell. Bathtubs. Bathtubs full of weed. <laughs> Just like the most ignorant shit. Do you have any? Ba that bleep is so loud. Holy crap. Do you have any bad, brutal nicknames for anybody in the band? Kevin Spacey. <laughs> Who is Kevin Spacey? Kevin. <laughs> uh, my nickname is Toast. When I'm stoned, he's a uh, he's Pudge. Um, Why Pudge? I feel like that. I just, I, you, you have to meet him to, to okay. understand it. You gotta meet right. him. Now in 2018, the nickname question has multiple layers to it now because the kid on the left named Dom says, does anyone have any nicknames in the band? And Will says, Kevin Spacey. And in the band, there's a guy named Kevin Geyer who has a cool project called Elder Brother. You should check it out. Anyway, he's like, yeah, uh, that's the, Kevin's nickname, Kevin Spacey, Kevin Geyer. And it's even funnier now. It's, it's actually not funny, but all the Kevin Spacey stuff that's came out now, it's just kind of like, wow, that's, there's just another layer now. I wish Kevin Spacey didn't do those things. So what was it like going to Japan? I mean, that must've been really cool. Yeah. Incredible, dude. Yeah. Incredible. Mizuki is the man. Mizuki Ice Ishii, girls. Ice Girls. Ice dude. mother girls. He's the man. Don't forget it. Never disrespect it. The Japanese album? Is it like translated in Japanese? Or what is the deal with that? It's just, it's just released um, in Japan, right? Actually, it's released in Japan. Parker took classes oh, yeah. on uh, <laughs> how to sing Japanese. <laughs> Actually, so, I re-recorded the whole album in <laughs> Japanese. That would have been and, uh, so awesome. I forgot it all. I forgot it all because I had to learn it really quickly, so I forgot it all. But yeah, the whole album's in Japanese. Uh, oh, pai misate. <laughs> Konnichiwa. Uh, show me your tits. This beautiful, young, majestic male asked the question, was the album translated into Japanese? And Parker says that he took classes on how to sing Japanese. And no one laughed. Everyone took it seriously. Everyone thought that it was serious. No one thought that this was maybe a joke. Oh, maybe they're messing with us. No, they thought that Parker Cannon took singing lessons on how to sing in Japanese, learned how to sing in Japanese, then forgot all of it. It's pretty believable though, honestly, I get it. So this part really, really confuses me because the kid asks Parker a question and then is like, Will, here you go. And then Will's like, me. And then the kid's like, no, Parker. Parker, listen up, it, it, if you start in a TV show, what would it be, Will? Huh? If you start in a TV show. I did? No, Parker did. Parker did, what would he be? <laughs> Why would you ask him? He'd be in Friends. <laughs> I'd be Joe and be Friends. He's got the smile. I'd be, um, beautiful smile. I'd be, uh, there are just certain points of this interview that I just don't even have any commentary for that I think just not saying anything says more than saying something. So this next part is incredibly awkward because the Wonder Years tour manager comes up for part of the interview and you can you can hear Parker and Will trying to talk to him over there be like, come on, please save us, dude, please save us, just, I'm begging you. And then the kid on the right is like, no, no, later, later, later. And then the guy freaking comes up for like two seconds. We've got, we got later. 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 Later.
Come on later, in here. Later. Come on later, in here. Later. Later. Come on later. 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 Have a good day. <laughs> Catch you later. <laughs> later. Later. That entire part of the video, that entire part of the interview is more awkward than, than this entire video that I'm making. Just those like 45 seconds right there. Next question, they ask the very, very simple question of, are you guys making some new music even though they just put out a record like less than a year ago at this point? And they're like, yeah, dude, we're gonna be putting out a folk album and instrumental and we're collabing with Wu-Tang. And they're just like, wow, that is so freaking sick. Neither of them are like, oh, you come on guys. We know you're just messing with us. They're like, wow, like what is like what is the folk album gonna sound like? Are you guys writing new music for the story so far? Yes sir. Yes sir? Yeah. Right. Yeah, we've been writing all tour. So like is there anything like we can expect in the near future? I mean obviously like a new album, but can you tell us anything about that? We're doing a collab with uh with Wu Tang. It's coming out soon. And then uh we're doing a full um, folk album that's just gonna be all all instrumentals, no vocals or anything. So, yeah. and then another full length in the in the, the fall. Dang, they just put out a full length record. Then they got like two more coming out the next year. These these freaking boys are just cranking out the tunes and collabing with Wu Tang. Are you freaking kidding me? Story so far, they're insane, dude. All right, well, thanks guys so much for hanging out with us. It was really cool meeting you guys. Thank and you. Uh, please Thank go you. check out this kid's YouTube videos too. So, this kid, this kid doesn't this have a name or anything. <laughs> <I don't. laughs> So to wrap this video up, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put on my seatbelt to signify that this video is indeed in fact coming to a close and I will be driving home from this grocery store parking lot back to my house to edit this video. I wanna say a couple closing words. Overall, this interview was ridiculous. It was funny, but I don't want anyone to give these guys a hard time because this is really, really all in good fun. Even though I'm just kind of goofing on them a little bit, I just want this to be really, really lighthearted. <clears throat> I think we all need to laugh at ourselves sometimes. And like I said earlier, they've already acknowledged this in the past. This is just, I just had to talk about this because it's so super funny. And I'm also not sure to what degree of seriousness I'm speaking of when I say that these are the reasons why Parker does not do interviews anymore. I honestly think these two reasons might be very, very big reasons. But again, I don't know. Maybe he's just tired of it. Um, I appreciate you mates checking out this video. Let me know how you're liking this format. If you haven't subscribed, you should. It's free. Mates Club Forever. I love y'all mates so much. I'll see you on Thanksgiving, maybe.